Are you ready to start? I guess. I, we're kind of enjoying our conversation about <laughs> things we did right for once. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. And now here's your host, Rish Outfield. Oh, you bastard. And Big Anklevich. Oh, you bastard. That is really crappy. Hi, everybody. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rish Outfield. Uh... Welcome to another episode of the Dune Steef Audio Fiction Magazine. Today we have another something different for you. <laughs> Is it something different? I, I I'm guess afraid it does. that it's not. I... Well, I mean, it's not a story story. It's an audio drama kind of a story, right? So that makes it different, doesn't it? Okay. I mean, we've done it before. It's not like we've never <laughs> done this. But it's different than... It's a very special episode of Blossom. No, not very, or special, or Blossom, even. <laughs> it's just uh, what it is. Uh, yes, and now it's, uh, I tried to do an annual barbecue sketch. Every year I tried to do another barbecue sketch, and I think we've told in the past that it's like Saturday Night Live has the set built for the barbecue sketches, and every season they're going to cart it out and do a sketch on this set, and it's always variations on the same theme. So this one's episode, this one is called Ah Shenanigans. Ah Shenanigans. Yeah, it's usually just a bunch of neighbors at a barbecue, a neighborhood barbecue, and they try to one up one another about whatever the subject is uh-huh. in this particular. And so we had one where they were one upping each other about how politically correct they were. And we had one where they were one-upping each other about... Shoot, I can't remember the rest. Can you remember some of the other ones they were one-upping? How how great their kids were? Yeah, how wonderful, how a chop off the old block their kid was. And I remember you and, had oh. a kid that was a regular old Cynthia Rothrock or <laughs> Jeff Speakman or something like that. <laughs> Wasn't that Brian Lincoln who did that one? Oh, was it? Okay. <laughs> He kept naming all these like super B-list action heroes, and I'm just like, who are are these real people, or did you make up all these names? Oh, and the la- I think the other one was how great, and then uh, conversely, how awful their marriages actually were. They were like, oh yeah, and we do this, and we love each other so much, and and then all of a sudden, one person says something negative, and it immediately shifts, and they're one-upping <laughs> each other and how awful their marriages are, and the same thing. Did I really write that one? Because that one sounds funny. I think you did. Cool. Unless you stole it from somebody. Oh. So you are known for doing that. <laughs> I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so in the past, we'd always been able to manage to get these done in person. I guess they've always been at the New Media Expo. It was a tradition, and we haven't done New Media Expo in two years, so... Yeah, it's been a while. It's too bad. been a while. Sorry. So, yeah, I I wish there was a way that we could... uh, I wish there was a way I could interact with other people, but I don't. (laughs) Instead, we had to do it via Skype, which was kind of cool. At least we were doing it kind of live, although... Uh Uh-oh. My stupid internet connection would not keep up, and so I dropped out every minute and a half, and then took about 30 seconds to come back up. That was annoying. Oh, you know what? Before we get this deep into the story discussion, maybe we should play the sketch, the sure. barbecue sketch for them. So, Ah Shenanigans barbecue sketch. Hope you all enjoy it. Uh, we'll give you a cast list when we get back. Oh, this is by Rich Outfield, too, by the way, in case anybody didn't realize that. I forgot to put Travis Tritt in this one. Is it too late? My awesome mutual fund. Since it had been years and years since, pretty much any mutual fund actually decreased in value over the period of a year. Hey, kids, don't tear up the grass. We're guests here. But then, of course, the recession happened, and we all had to reset our clocks, start quoting a new script. Like one of those... It has been so and so many days without an accident, signs at a factory. <laughs> exactly. Unofficially, I blame Sarah Palin, but you usually can't just come out and say, Allison, don't put that in your mouth. Oh, look, here comes the new guy. What's his name again? Lewis? 
Oh, Louis. Uh, only it's spelled like Louis. You boys play nice now. Hi, Louis. Nice to see you out and about. Hey there, Roberta. Eddie, any meat left? Of course. Still a lot of everything. Sorry we're late. Little Alex thought he would fill up his fish tank in his room using the garden hose. Slid it right through his bedroom window. With the water running, of course. <laughs> of course. Wow, that reminds me of Anthony. He tried to help us wash all the windows last spring by spraying them with the hose. Even the upstairs windows. Ah, uh, shenanigans. Our Allison once tried to wash the cat in the bathtub. And she'd put hot water in there. And bubble bath. Oh, that's terrible, Eddie. You let the cat in the house? Nah, at least she didn't try to dry the cat using the microwave. Ugh, that sounds like my boy Andrew. Anything he can either break or get dirty, he'll do it. The other day, he made mud pies in the backyard. And when I came in for a beer, there they were, lined up on the middle shelf of the fridge. My little squirts did the same thing, only their mud pies were on the deck, which isn't nearly as bad though they made up for it by running on the new couch with Sharpies. Oh. The salesman at the store kept trying to push some kind of extended warranty on me, but I didn't like his personality, so I didn't buy it. Who's the loser now, huh? <laughs> Sharpies. Terrible things. It never ends. My Austin used to pee all over the house, in the hallway, in the corners, in the sink, in the dog dish. Killed a bunch of house plants that way. Kids are terrible. The other day... I come into the family room to see Abdul looking at pictures of Kim Kardashian on his computer. She was naked in every other one. I don't even know how a six-year-old spells Kardashian. I'm not sure I can spell it now. Ah, shenanigans. My Allison set up a DVR to record everything on Tween Disney. Filled the DVR up in less than a week. And whenever I tried to delete what was on there, it said, currently recording, please wait. What did you do? Oh, we had to get our own separate DVR. It was just easier that way. Kids and technology. Not long ago, my boy took my credit card out of my wallet and ordered this game called Monkey Quest with it. But he didn't just order one. That would be forgivable. There were like 16 copies that came to the house within a couple of days. No way. I wondered who those three copies we got came from. I called Amazon, but they said they were all paid for. Oh, sweetheart, uh, you be careful with that fire extinguisher now. Hey there, Patton. Didn't think you were going to make it. I almost didn't. A really great barbecue, Eddie. Thanks for the invitation. Well, you live on the block. I couldn't exactly not invite you. Well, thanks. Uh, what are you guys talking about? Oh, hey there, Louis. Patton, just telling horror stories about our kids. Oh, horror stories? Really? Oh, yeah. Mine are the worst. Oh, I beg to differ with you there. You've got a daughter, don't you, Patton? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I do, as a matter of fact. And I understand she's something of a hellion, isn't she? Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't uh, go that far. How uh, uh, many kids have you got, Roberta? Jeez, I lose count sometimes. Six, I believe. Six? Yep. Dennis just won't stay off of me. He sees his virility as a point of pride, something to boast about. The gorilla even knocked me up the week he'd gotten a vasectomy. Wow, that's impressive. The bastard. I'm certainly paying for it now, believe me. Oh, I'm sure they're not so bad, your children. They are, I assure you. That's what we've just been talking about. Awful, destructive, mean, twisted, weird things our children do. Or have done. Uh, like what? Like my youngest, Arcady. He keeps saying this word Chima over and over again. Maybe a hundred times a day, maybe more. He won't stop, no matter how much I scream at him. Chima? What's that? A sex thing? No, he's only three. It's a cartoon or something. Oh, okay. Yes, but with mine, it was Heavens to Murgatroyd. It's from some old cartoon, I think. And she'd say it again and again, Heavens to Murgatroyd, until I had to take a rolled-up newspaper to her, like you would to a dog who tears up the furniture. Huh. With my kid, it was the word fart. He found it hilarious. So, fart, 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 all day long. He kept on saying it until 
I don't know. We just ignored it, and he stopped or grew out of it. Yes, my daughter went through that same babbling phase, except it was rare forms of cancer. She'd chant them all the time, like a mantra, you know, during dinner, in the car, before she'd go to sleep. Hepatocarcinoma, astrocytoma, a malignant fibrous histiocytoma, familio adendomatous polyopsis, and so on. Hey, Patton, that's, uh, kind of disturbing. Uh, I'm sorry, what sorts of things were you folks talking about? <laughs> you know, shenanigans. Like... Just the other day, my youngest stuck a fork in the outlet. Shorted out the hole downstairs. But he was okay? Yeah, not a scratch on him, damn it. We've all been there. Patton, does your daughter ever make mud pies? Well, I can't say that she has. Although she did fill several Ziploc baggies with diarrhea to put in the fridge right before her grandmother came to stay a week with us. That was not a pleasant discovery. Yikes. Ew. Uh, shenanigan. It's hard to say which is worse. When Anastasia gets into trouble around the house or when she just sits there spending hours staring at her iPad. You got your kid an iPad? Uh, it used to be my brother's, but they said he couldn't have it in prison. So it's hers now. Oh, I guess it's okay then. You weren't kidding about technology, though. My Allison borrowed the phone the other day and... When I took it to work, I couldn't get it to work anymore. It was locked. And she had changed the password to 16 days of summer or something. Ugh, you don't want to let your kids use your phone. Mine just watches Spongebob on it over and over again. Sometimes the same damn episode. You're lucky it's Spongebob. My kid keeps trying to watch The Walking Dead. Then he has nightmares and guess who he wants to sleep with. Um... Kim Kardashian? No, me and my wife. And dollars to donuts, it's on the one night of the month she lets me top off the tank with unleaded. Or would, until the kid comes in crying. That's too bad. My kids will watch all these asinine YouTube videos all day long. Sometimes they're not even in English. Right, right. You know, my daughter sometimes watches those ISIS and Al-Qaeda videos. The ones where they execute infidels and Western journalists with those long, curved swords. Maybe Spongebob's not so bad. Scimitars, I think they're called? That's right. Thanks. Oh, wait. I forgot to tell you guys this. The other morning, I walked in, and little Ashton was dancing to a Rihanna song, wearing a pair of my panties and a bra. Clean or dirty? Oh, one of her clean songs. So there's that. I wish I could say it was, if I was a boy, but I guess that would have been a little too clever. Whoa, Rihanna, I'm impressed. What about her? I really find her attractive. What can I say? Um, Is it the accent? Does she have an accent? I thought she was from California. No, she's from someplace exotic. I can't remember where. Detroit, I think. Uh, Someplace in Michigan. (laughs) That's right. Sometimes Allison puts on makeup. She's in such a hurry to grow up, but she just slathers it on like, like she's in an 80s music video. Or a child prostitute, am I right? Uh, well, let's not go that far. My boy Ailman drinks whatever he finds in the house, in the pantry, the medicine cabinets. He doesn't care how sick it makes him. Once Anastasia dressed the neighbor boy up in a perfect replica of a Nazi SS uniform and taught him to goose step, I was kind of impressed until the Silvermans got home. Wow, shenanigans, huh? The Silvermans moved away, didn't they? As a matter of fact, that same month. I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but you know those little capsules that turn into dinosaurs or farm animals when you put them in water? Well, my boy Albert, he... He swallowed one? Whoa, that that seems pretty dangerous. I only wish he swallowed one. He, uh, he put it in his rectum. His what? Why? What for? Oh, the poor kid. Poor kid? The poor dinosaur. Oh, and kids are such a mess. Everything they touch gets fingerprints on it. Or butt prints. Don't forget those. Blood stains. My kids are always leaving their Pokemon cards around the house. 
Those things cost a fortune, and they're everywhere. That's nothing. You ever step on a Lego in the middle of the night? I swear, they must make those out of plastic and ground-up glass. Anastasia loosened the railing when her grandmother came over, so she'd fall down the stairs. Your mother or your wife's mother? Um, my wife's that time. Oh, okay. Plus, she'd taken all these copies of Monkey Quest we somehow got, broke them up, and placed them all over the floor to, like, make the fall more dangerous. Sometimes I think I have the worst children in the world. You don't. I, uh, well... My little girl was writing letters to Robin Williams shortly before he died. Um, okay. It's hard being a parent. Tell me about it. My kid is the worst thing to ever happen to me. Wow, I have literally never heard a parent say that. I I think it all the time, but I thought I was the only one. Oh, I'm sure your kid's not so bad. Yes, she is. Not compared to mine. My kid drives me up a wall. Well, my kid drives me up onto the ceiling. Sure. My kid crashes through the wall and into the other room. My kid is so bad, she made us stop having children. Boom. Bisectomy when she was three. Well, my wife got her tubes tied when my Anastasia was only two. No more chance of bringing more of that kind of evil into the world. (laughs) Evil? Isn't that going a little far, Patton? Yeah. Yeah, I guess it is. I'm sorry. Of course. We were troublemakers when we were kids, too. I broke Stephen Staley's window, and no one ever knew it was me. I used to steal cigarettes from the corner store. I didn't even smoke them. I just plant them on kids at school to get them in trouble. What goes around comes One around. time, I admit, I spray-painted the sign in front of a church so it said, Holy Butt Reamer. Never got caught. <laughs> More shenanigans. Funny, I was a really obedient, respectful child. I have no idea why this would be happening to me. So, no more kids in your future, huh? Oh, absolutely not. Sarah did her thing, but I still worried. By the time Anastasia was a year old, I nearly took my baby-making options out with a meat cleaver. But saner heads prevailed. Oh, that's good. I used a rolling pin instead. Wow, that's pretty dedicated. Could your little girl really be that bad? Yes. Yes. Well, there's no way she's as awful as my child. I guarantee she's a dozen times as bad as your kid, the little monster. My spawn makes yours look like Oliver Twist, the girl version. That would probably be the girl from Harry Potter. Another hottie, that one. You know, sometimes late at night, I go to the bath. Ew, Louie, don't finish that sentence. You can finish it later. I'll remind you. Well, Patton, at least you only got one. Count your blessings. I try, but it's hard. I don't know. Maybe Anastasia just needs friends. A good influence. Good luck with that in this neighborhood. I was thinking of having a get-together for a slip-and-slide party. First week in June. Oh, shoot. We travel in June. My nephew's getting married. Sorry. Uh, Seasonal allergies wipe us out. Oh, Next time, then. Yeah, sure. Well, it's time I got back. I gotta go, too. Check on the kids. See what they're up to. See you. Bye, guys. So, I I was wondering... Do you hear crying? Yeah, I hear it a lot. Oh, uh, that that might be mine. I I gotta go. Okay. Bye. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Uh, so the cast list, we had... Uh, do you remember who was what character? Like, they had names, right? Yeah, they did. Like, Eddie was Big Anklevich. Okay. Or B.D. Anklevich. Oh, B.D. Anklevich. You want it, yeah. Like his eyes and his nuts. And Patton? Patton, was that you or was Patton... Oh, well, that was me. That was okay, that was you. I'm just trying to remember. I remember the names, but I don't remember which characters they went with. Roberta was uh, Renee Chambliss. Okay. The great Renee Chambliss. And what was the last character's name? Louis. Louis! Of course. I should have known. And Louis was by Adam Gifford. That is correct, sir. 
So there's our cast list for this story. We just kind of rounded everybody up. I think what our deal was was you wanted Renee to be Roberta, and then from there you just found out when she could do it and then post on Facebook. We're doing it at this time. We need one more person who can do it. And Adam did it for us despite the fact that at any moment his wife could have gone into labor. Yeah, she was like in the next room doing that thing yeah, where you breathe the bre yeah the the and, Lamaze breathing and yeah even an hour before it was time to record he was saying ah you know i might have to drop out you know if if her contractions whatever get closer yeah together know, or something whatever ar arcane machinery has to align for this baby to come out you know i might have to up and leave and and i was just like oh gosh let me know and he said well she said to go ahead <laughs> and so i was like okay i'll try and be brief and Unfortunately, somebody just kept dropping out of the, uh, yeah. the Skype call. But he did tell me that as soon as we were done, he took her to the hospital. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so, yeah, I don't know that she had the baby that very day. but Yeah, uh, she had the baby on the freeway because of my Skype uh, call dropping out over and over again. <laughs> yeah, it was so frustrating. I'm sure you probably made a, a reel of me swearing going, Oh, f***ing thing. It's, oh, I'm gone again. Come on. Okay, come on. Start back up. I guess I should have. I, you, you should have suggested that. What we basically would have you do is just say your line, because you were recording your audio, so even though we couldn't hear you, we knew that you had said the line, and then it was an unwritten rule that any time you reconnected, it was your turn again. Yeah, just say my next line, because uh, that was where you guys would be all sitting there going, oh, I think he's, he's going to be... Uh... And then after a while, you guys just even stopped waiting for me. I'd come back on, and you were reading past me, and I'm like, "Wait, I didn't, I didn't say the other line. You want me to? I better say it." I mean, we were recording separately, so I could have just said it anyway. But well, and that's the question: is how important was it to do it live, or you right. know, with other people with Skype? To Most be able of the to time, react to to what the other people say or not. In the history of this show, it, it was always people other than you and me record separately and then we splice the lines together and there have been a couple of live readings but they're the exception rather than the rule but the beauty of a Skype call is that it is live that you can play off of one another there's been many many times where somebody will send in lines and their tone or you know the way that they say the line doesn't quite match with the response or the, the line that follows because that person couldn't know how the first person was going to say their line. It's just right. like, it's like, oh, that's unavoidable, darn it. Or when you discover that people are pronouncing a name or a word oh, yeah, in different ways, and you're just like, oh, shoot, I, I hadn't even thought about that. And, and we've tried to anticipate that sort of thing from time to time. We got an upcoming story where there's a, uh, a demon's name, and it's like, oh, I've got to come up with how that demon's name will be pronounced. And send that to everybody so that they all say it the same way. Yeah. And we'll see. You know, I haven't edited that thing together. We'll see if, if it even matters. But um, there's one other story is that we've had for I don't know how long. That's a great big hefty, I don't know that it's a novella, but it's whatever the step before novella is. That uh, Novelette. It has all of this future speak in it of, I guess, how the English language has mutated or you know people from one planet talk in one way and people from another planet have their the language is sort of split and all that and i remember when i first read it i was like how in the hell are we going to do this and in my back of my mind i thought well the only way to do it is to be with a bunch of people and say okay everybody from this planet you will deliver your lines like this. Listen to the way I'm going to do that, and you try and imitate that. And then the other people, you know, you can speak in normal <laughs> way, or you can speak in an English accent or whatever. Everybody from this planet has to speak like they are uh, from that Tobias Bakel story. What were those things called? Uh, the Whippets? Whips, yeah, Ana the Whippet. Anachoinosis? Anachoinosis, yeah. Tobias Bakel. <laughs> uh. Anyway, we haven't been able to do that episode just because I, I thought, well, it's just going to be too hard if we don't do that live, quote unquote live. Right. But it's such a big story 
that how the hell are we going to do that live? Yeah, it's going to be a big time it, commitment. You know, sometimes I'll listen to an audiobook and it like for example the His Dark Materials books by uh, Philip Pullman are full cast. That's but crazy they're all, that they do that. But they're full cast, but they're in a studio. And Garrick Hagen, who played Biggs Darklighter in Star Wars, directs those. And I thought, well, how 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 do you do this? Because Philip Pullman himself narrates the book. You know, he does the the narrator. I mean, how do we how do you describe the non dialogue parts? Narrator. And then you know, there's a whole huge cast, but a large cast. Uh, that a does all of the a, a full even yes, <laughs> and I wonder. Okay, are they all in the studio at the same time? And if so, how insanely boring is it for somebody who's okay? My part doesn't come till chapter three, and they're on chapter one, and it's going to take at least an hour to get to chapter three. You know what I mean? I they're I don't just, know how they do that. They're just out in the hall drinking coffee and looking at their phone. And maybe that's the case. They're being paid to be there, so it's just like, well, yeah, if it takes six hours before they use me, that's life, you know? I'm being paid to be here. I'm a captive audience. Yeah, but... I don't know. There was a Shannon Hale book that I listened to that was full cast the entire way, and I was just like, whoa. I was expected it to stop at some point, you know? Usually, like, I've, seen, I've, I've listened to some other books that are, uh, you know, they'll, they'll have, like, little portions that are full cast especially blackstone audio they do this a lot uh where like the the first little bit of a chapter will be all different you know they'll have gabrielle de cure and you know all those different big names kirby hayborn <laughs> right kirby hayborn and and what's uh, the name Stephen of that Rudnicki Stephen Rudnicki. And all these people will be doing voices just for little bits, you know? Like, for example, we'll say like Ender's Game, you know, how they have those little things with Graf and somebody else talking, whoever the heck he's talking to. I've, I've never, I don't know if I've ever figured that yeah, out. Yeah, he's talking to like some military subordinate. Yeah, I think it's And they're like, commenting the, on like how Ender is doing. Yeah, and they just, and it's just lines, you know, and it's not, there's no said this guy and any of that stuff. They would always do those full cast, and then the rest of the thing was just narrated by one narrator. And I was expecting that to happen, and then it just kept going. And I was like, holy crap, this whole book is full cast? And weirdly, all the characters had a, uh, an accent, and I couldn't figure out where it was from. It was just some kind of Middle American accent from of some sort. And I was just like, gosh, where are all these people from? Are they from, like, Wisconsin, or... No, that's not quite right. Anyways. But that's an effective thing? Does it bother you? The, they Do they cut out the, you know, Toby said, she asked, he replied. Do they cut that out or does the narrator still say Toby said, he asked? I couldn't replied. say because I didn't like read the book along with it or anything like that to see if they dropped them when they didn't need them. I'm sure they used a lot of them, maybe all of them, I don't know. I think when you have a full cast, you can drop them because they're often unnecessary, but... Well, see, I disagree. Because a lot of times it draws attention to itself in my mind. Which is like, wait, who was that? How do we know that that's who that was supposed to be? I, wait. And then I go, oh, they probably dropped, Mariah asked, uh -huh. from that sentence. But I had to do the mental gymnastics of... Whose voice was that? Was that the lady that plays Mariah or is that the lady that plays the sister? I think that, you know, and, and unless a character says, Mariah, what are you doing here? I needed the, you know what I you mean? You needed more of them. Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes people overdo it when they drop some, you know. And I've I've heard that being a, a thing with podcasts, you know, people that are doing full casts. They're like, yeah, you can drop these. And, and I've seen some people overdrop them to where you're just like, oh, my gosh, there's four women all talking to each other here and I don't know which one is which anymore. They're, they're, you know, it's too many. Yeah, and, and then you probably go the other way too. Me, if I were producing it, not a word would be lost. If it were you my would, plan, not them. a word would be lost. But the glory <laughs> comes to me. Dude, Rish would add words, I'm sure. That's the way he, he uh, edits anything. Like, I need to edit this down. Let's see. Oh, I added a thousand words when I edited it down. That's not editing down. What are you talking about? That was supposed to be a drabble. <laughs> F the drabble. <laughs> 
but yeah, the, I, I think that I am a little bit more, I don't know, married to the text. You know, lots of times we'll be doing something and the lines don't quite match up. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, I don't want the author to think that we deliberately changed that. But uh, do you have them do it again? Or, uh. oh, and with, yeah. when I'm doing audiobooks, you know, for people, there are some authors that are super, super picky. And, oh, you changed this. You know, it's. You, you said could have, and it was actually could have. Okay, maybe they're not that <laughs> anal, but, you know, they'll be like, what, but hey, this is the text with a capital the. And then there are others who are just like, eh, yeah. Oh, I didn't even notice you you missed a paragraph there because eh, who cares? Let's just go. Or they're like, oh, thank you for fixing all my typos for me because, yeah, I, I didn't mean to say it totally wrong <laughs> like that. But damn it, that one part where I said it right and you said it wrong... F you. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I have told you about the, how the <laughs> audiobook process works before then. <laughs> yeah. I guess the point I was trying to make is that everybody has a different barometer of where, you know, what's too much or how it goes and all that stuff. And and I, it's weird. I For the most part, I don't enjoy the full cast audiobooks as much as I do a really talented a single narrator. Uh-huh. I probably but, agree with you, although I haven't heard very many that are full cast. No, because imagine how much it. work that would be. Yeah. I'm always surprised when, you know, I, I you hear a chapter or something that's full cast. I'm like, wow, they're just going to keep going? To really? It right. kind of blows me away whenever it happens. It's, it's rare, I would say. How many have you even come across? Probably four or five. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it is rare. And maybe the question needs to be asked is... Does it bring so much more to the table that it's worth the exponential amount of, of work that you add to the table? And, and yeah, I, I don't know. But the question I had was, why on earth did you read a Shannon Hale book? Because uh, somebody gave it to me. Who would do something like that? Oh, like a some, complete douche. Somebody that hates you, Just I a, think. Yeah, a total douche. It was I was going on a long trip, and he, he, this guy gave me like four different audiobooks. And, yeah, that was one of them. Another one was, like, a classic novel that was totally putting me... The guy... Robinson Crusoe. He wanted me dead. I'm sorry. Wait, I don't know. Uh... Anyways. Uh, yeah, this was a fun uh, barbecue sketch, I thought. It's similar because we already had parents boasting about their children. And this time around, they're boasting about their children's shenanigans, I guess. Their exploits. The crap that they pull, which is a thing that I'm I'm sure I've been a part of at least two or three of these kind of conversations where you're sitting around saying, oh yeah, my kid did this. Because my kids have done crap like this. One time when my daughter was super young still, we put her in her playpen, which is what she would sleep in. She refused to go in a crib, so she just slept in her playpen all the time. So we put her in her playpen to go to sleep for a nap. And, you know, she didn't want to go to sleep, so she messed around. She reached for whatever she could get, which, in this case, she was near a dresser. She managed to reach up and grab a picture frame that was sitting on the dresser, pull it down on top of herself, shatter the glass all over herself, and then proceeded to go to sleep and have her nap in shards of broken <laughs> glass. And we came in to get her after her nap should be over. And she, luckily, none of this glass cut her badly. But yeah, there's little nicks, little bits of blood all over the place. And she's asleep in shards of broken glass. <laughs> it's just, you know, the, the kind of things that kids get up to is crazy. And I'm sure you, well, maybe you don't know it as well for your own self because you can't remember it as well. You know, you, you've heard stories of stuff that you've done. Like when we went to the Hoover Dam and I stood up on the railing, you know, over the thousand foot drop or whatever. Like a crazy child. But I don't remember doing that. I've just heard the story. Um... Well, the, the other thing that was different about this one is this is the first one where we had a female character. And as I was writing it, you know, it was just going to be the, the regular three dudes it that Robert it always before is. before it became Roberta. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Then I thought, oh, you know what would be fun is to, to have Renee be one of these people. Because 
it, I guess, you know, it always seems a little bit like a sausage fest to these uh, <laughs> it's a barbecue. barbecue Come on, things. of course it's a sausage fest. Well, you know. You can... What do you think they're cooking? I prefer venison. But I had said the last time we went to a, uh, I thought, oh, you know what would be fun? New Media Expo. We'd perform these in front of everybody that was gathered. And, it, oh, it was fun. Because I thought, wow, it's like there's an audience. And sometimes we'd have to la- pause for the laughter. Mm-hmm. And that's why it felt like a Saturday Night Live sketch for me. And I was like, oh, every time we do these, I'm going to write one. And I told everybody, you know, like Abby and Renee and them, I said, hey, next time I'll, I'll write one that's just girls that you guys can do. And I, I have that script. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's I, never I believe, been the next time, though, I believe it's called Coming Up Next. And yeah, it, it exists. I've written it, and it's a part for three or four girls. And uh, yeah, we've never done the New Media Expo again. But while I was writing this one, I was just like, oh, I'm going to switch that up, and I'm going to wi- write the part for Renee. And so then suddenly there was a spot for a fourth guy. So we got to have four people instead of just three people. But yeah, having you know, the genders change or whatever changes the way that that you write things and and it would be fun to write a barbecue sketch that was just three women trying to one up each other it's just way way easier to write guy stuff because i know how guys talk yeah that's one of those things that uh, that's always a little hard and have you've even done that like on purpose when you're writing stuff just be like okay i'm writing a story and it's going to be a girl that's the main character and it's going to be a first-person story <laughs> told by with a girl's the main character. So you even have to have like her thoughts and everything, and just to force yourself to try and put yourself in a girl's position. But those are always mistakes because I can't produce an audiobook of that. <laughs> right. I just I would not be comfortable, and I would not be comfortable hearing <laughs> a male narrator read a first-person female story. It just it it would. It's not right. It's like the John Green always writes those uh, teen romance things, those weepers, and they almost always have female narrators for his books because they're you know the main character is a girl, and it's t- first person. And yeah, I, what would it be? What would it sound like? And it's like hey, it was the third day of my period, and so you know <laughs> I was still a little bit irritable. But you know what can I do? My sisters all put up with it, so I, I don't know what the voice that was, but. Uh, I do vow to narrate my next audiobook in that voice. Good. So Good. yes, with those stories where it's first person female, they all sit un. I think that was unrecorded. A young Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> yeah, you just need to send a batch of them to Renee or something. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I enjoyed the curveball of the fourth guy coming in and just, you know, the shenanigans went from shenanigans to uh, Damien's shenanigans. <laughs> Well, it's, again, the opposite of Marshall's character on the one where they're talking about how right. great their kids are. She's like, my daughter has never gone to the bathroom. <laughs> he did say that. He's like, my, my daughter actually is an angel, literally an angel. <laughs> anyway, it feels like we suddenly ran out of things to say. It's, it's not a long episode, which is nice. Although, boy, that sketch felt like it was long while we were recording it. We're and just... like you pointed out earlier, I'm not capable of cutting things down. I always find new places to expand. And yeah, I, I wonder if the sweet spot for a uh, a barbecue sketch is like 10 minutes. And this one was like this 14. Was 14, you think it was too long? I don't know, it felt longer. I think the biggest problem was that I kept dropping out, you know? I must have dropped out of the call and, and then it would it would just freeze up. It would drop the call, and then it would pick it right back up and hop back on. And it would take a minute each time to do it. And it probably happened at least 15 times, probably more. And, you know, when it's a 14-minute sketch, and I dropped out 15 times, and it takes a minute to do it each time, it's just... I was out of control. It was the worst. But I would like to be able to do more episodes via Skype. Because we talked, was that this year where we said, hey, we're going to have to do away with the full cast yeah. aspect of our show? Just to enable us to do episodes. It just, yeah, the waiting on the lines or whatever is crippling. But, yeah, doing a Skype episode is like doing it live, all in the same room. And if everybody records their lines, 
you know, I, and, and that's something that I've really enjoyed when you and I are in the same room with other people is that you'll jump in there and direct, even though I'm the writer of the sketch. And you'll be like, oh, hey, hey, would you read the line again? Say, yeah. And we can't do that when it's, oh, just send in your lines. Right. Um, I just You're wish just... it were easier to get people all lined up, all our ducks in a row. Because like John Hyam, I think he helped us with uh, uh, wiki history. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, he'd be happy to participate in this barbecue sketch. And I was like, oh, well, that'll be interesting. There'll be an English accent. And then he said, well, I, you know, it'll be four o'clock in the morning, my time. But, you know, I, if you really need me to. And <laughs> I was like, no, dude, don't. No, no podcast is worth, no parsec is worth this. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what we need to do for the one that's the space uh, story is make sure we set it at a time so that we can get people with English accents to participate, people with Australian accents to participate, and people with Kiwi accents to participate, etc. As many different accents as we can. I tried to do that the, when we did the wiki history. I tried to set it at a time of day where, you know, anywhere around the globe where people speak English, they could probably jump in and put it in. We didn't get anybody other than John that wasn't from America, but I tried. Maybe maybe they'll participate better next time. Maybe if we give them more time. I know that a lot of people were like, oh, I'd love to, but I didn't have time to prepare, so I have other plans. Yeah, but at the same time, you don't know more than three or four days ahead of time whether you're going to be doing something, whether you're going to be out of town and all that. And so, ah. Yeah, it just happens. We had asked Renee when she could do it. And she's like, oh, I'm free on this day and this day. And both of those days you were going to the Grand Canyon. Yeah. So I was like, oh, well, I, uh, it's not. Uh, she had a really open schedule and we couldn't do it. But, uh, you know, again, I appreciate everybody going out of their way to be a voice on the show. I, I don't know if I've ever forgotten to thank people. But, you know, if I have, I apologize. It, it's great that people are so willing to help us. In the same way as donations. I mean, we need donations to keep going. That dang Libsyn thing came up again the other day, and I was like, oh, shoot, now we're not going to be able to eat lunch when we get together. <laughs> now we're not going to be able to afford the tickets for... Uh... Oh, yeah, now we're not going to be able to afford the tickets for Doctor Strange for That Gets My Goat. The, the help with voices is always appreciated. Help with donations is always appreciated. If there are people out there that want to produce a story for us mention it and we'll we'll try and get on that it's just our production has gone way way down on this show i considered making up a phony sponsor and doing like a fake commercial today but then here we are in the car so i didn't have the script for me anyway but um donations we kind of need yeah that'd be awesome so yeah i hope you enjoyed the uh the sketch and the episode and uh come back we'll be back again soon hopefully soon we'll have a a, a space opera for you <laughs> and uh, some other stuff on top of that and uh we'll, we'll see you back with more stuff thanks for sticking with us and being a fan we love you guys and we'll see you next time good night i'm big Ankovich. oh well uh, yeah i'm i'm not you're not i'm rich outfield yes you are good job say good night gracie I will not do it. <laughs> See you, folks. The Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine is published under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. This means that you can share the Dune Steve with anyone you'd like, but you can't sell or change the file. Take two. Look at this photograph. Every time I do it makes me laugh. I can't remember any more of the words, sir. See, to me, Nickelback and Creed were interchangeable. Okay, I get that. But nobody ever talks about Creed it's like it's the worst shit ever. That's I... because Creed went away. Just Creed, little man. Yeah. You could do better. What did you say in your story? That was, uh, say, uncle. Where the kid hears Creed, and he's like, oh my gosh, it's the most beautiful thing ever. And he's just like, ugh, just Creed, little man. You should dream bigger. <laughs>
<laughs> you know what was the funniest thing that we've done in a long time? What? And I think it was the start of the abject failure episode. It just comes on and we go, get a little closer. <laughs> and we sing the whole thing. And then you go, why did we do that? And I go, no reason. And then we just go on with the show. That made me laugh a lot. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else laughs over something like that, but yeah, I just, oh my gosh. That's one of those songs, like we were talking about, that Patton Oswalt, where he's just, dude, we know all the words to the friggin' Arid Extra Dry commercial. Does that brand even exist anymore? I wouldn't I don't think, think so. so. I haven't heard of it in 20 years. Maybe more. 30, maybe. Well, is it because that was during our formative years and these are things that That's are burned you... on our brains when our brains are malleable? Or was it because there were fewer commercials in those days? Or was it because commercials would play for Ten a long, years. long time? Yeah, like the freaking uh, Hey Mikey commercial that ran for like 30 yeah, years. Yeah, that's the worst example. I mean, or best if you want to go. But yeah, that played 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 years. I, I don't know. It was probably from like 1972. And you and I weren't even born yet. And we were seeing it when, you know, we had kids of our own. <laughs> And they had that commercial, too. I can't remember what it's for, even, but it's the one where the old lady would say, if your tire is no good or whatever, feel free, feel to, free to bring to... it back. And the yeah, old lady discount throws, tire it, company. throws it through the window. I think that even played in California, so it must have been... Uh, a national. Yeah, a national. Yeah. I wonder if other people would know about it or not. Like my youngest, Arcady. He keeps saying the word Chima over and over again. Maybe a hundred times a day, maybe more. Say he won't stop, no matter how much I scream at him. Is <laughs> it Chima? It is I don't Chima. even know. Okay, I'll do it again. I wasn't sure, but when it was the sex thing, I thought it was Chima. Is that like some game thing or something? It's it's actually a Lego property oh. that Rish yeah. says over and over again, almost as much as he used to say Chalupa. Well, I wouldn't go that yeah, far. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm you know, the Halloween episode. Uh huh. Yeah, not all of that worked perfectly. And if I had time, you know, if I had to do it over again, I would do this differently and all that. But it was an experiment. And if it's a failed experiment, then bah. But if not, you know, that's good. And once you stop experimenting, that's when there's no more reason to continue. You're just doing the same thing over and over again. And mm -hmm. clean or dirty. Oh, one of her clean songs. So there's that. I wish I could say it was If I Was a Boy, but I guess that would have been a little too clever. I'm impressed. That's a Beyonce song. I blew it. Should we <laughs> fix that? Uh, change it to Beyonce? or, or did... if, you want, if you want me to do it again with Beyonce, I can. Should we change it? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, maybe Roberta just doesn't know. <laughs> Yeah, I would, that's what I was going to say. She's a parent. She doesn't know the difference between Rihanna and Beyonce. It can, it can be an inside joke to somebody who does. Okay, Okay. good point. Okay, you can go to Bloodstains. Oh, I think it was Gino. He, I think he wrote that in the comments. Oh, okay. Where he was, he was reading, he was listening to the story, and he's like, wow, Big has really changed. And then she gets hit by the car, and he's like, oh, same old Big. But then she gets healed, and David Bowie comes, and he's like, oh, wow, everything went great. That probably means I did a good job with that story. Yeah, that's why I'm sharing it with you. If I was like, gosh, that that story was a pile of brown excrement mm. with white spots in it, so it might not have been a human being that made the excrement. <laughs> I probably wouldn't share it with you then, but... Is it like <laughs> they, <laughs> they had these political ads or, or political, like, that's telephone right. calls or whatever that you would get, right? And it was Barack Obama doing the... Uh, the ad and <laughs> but since he's Barack Obama obviously and, and this is for like local races like just whoever the local person who's running for uh, whatever you know they get Barack Obama to say I think this person is great you know but <laughs> because obviously he can't do this for everybody because he's the president he doesn't have time for that kind of crap instead they had him read a script and then read each person's name and the way he read the script, he would pause before the name so that, you know, it wouldn't sound too weird. Except for they only had him read the name once. And so every time oh. he would come up and he'd say, I think that you should vote for Big Anklevich. 
Her buddy wouldn't even do that. It was like, I think you should vote for... Big Anklevich. Because he's a great upstanding man. Big Anklevich. Is, you know, each time it was said with exactly the same intonation and he kept saying their names throughout the thing. And so it was so goofy. And I forgot why I said this. You were... We were going somewhere you with it. You switch it up a little bit, I guess, each time. And maybe that's what reminded you. I, I don't know. Uh, wow. Because it's not like it's the same... Sk- I mean, could there, there were Saturday Night Live sketches where, yes, it was the exact same sketch. And they would change, like, a certain topic or change the... Not even the punchline, but the setup to the exact same punchline. <laughs> <laughs> Am I dropped out again? See, uh, uh, yeah, the Louis character, I think, is really, really sexually repressed. I think I was going to be him, but then I wrote the cancer lines, and I was like, oh, that's going to be a half hour for anybody to do. <laughs> Didn't so. want to put anyone through that. <laughs> what the hell kind of a name is Ailman before I go on? <laughs> All these are weird names. It's my own name. <laughs> but I want, want to be a rich story without him. Well, that's the whole thing with kids having all these, uh, you know, new, unusual names. So, your uncle's name is Ailman? Yes. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Plus, she'd taken all these copies of Monkey Quest we somehow got, broke them up, and placed them on the <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> That's some dark stuff, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I just like the callback to all of the monkey quest. (laughs) 